In this video, I'm going to teach you how to interpret and predict the number of peaks in an NMR spectrum. I'm going to be using proton or hydrogen NMR as my example, but this also applies to carbon NMR in the exact same way. So first of all, all of the hydrogens or protons, as we often call them, all of the hydrogens that are in identical bonding situations are known as chemically equivalent hydrogen. And each set of chemically equivalent hydrogens creates one peak in the NMR. Let's look at a couple of simple examples of small molecules to help us understand this concept of chemical equivalency. Starting with this little molecule right here, it has four different hydrogens, hydrogen atoms in them. Let's begin by focusing on this hydrogen right here. And we wanna think about what is the bonding situation for this particular hydrogen. This hydrogen is part of CH4. This hydrogen is bonded to a methyl group specifically. This hydrogen is also bonded to a methyl group. This hydrogen is also bonded to a methyl group, and the last one is as well. Because all four of these hydrogen atoms are bonded to a methyl group, we say that all four of these hydrogen atoms are chemically equivalent, and because they are all chemically equivalent, this means that this molecule will generate only one peak in the NMR spectrum, one peak that corresponds to all four of these hydrogens. The NMR instrument is not able to distinguish these four hydrogens from each other, because they are chemically equivalent or identical. Let's take a look at a slightly larger molecule. So this molecule has six hydrogens on it. And again, we just wanna analyze each hydrogen in this molecule. So this hydrogen right here is, uh, belongs to a CH3 group that is attached to a CH3 group. This hydrogen atom also belongs to a CH3 group that is attached to a CH3. And this hydrogen atom as well belongs to a CH3 that is attached to a CH3. So all three of these hydrogen atoms are equivalent to each other. What about this one right here? This hydrogen atom belongs to a CH3 group that is attached to a CH3 group. And this one as well belongs to a CH3 that's attached to a CH3. This one, same thing. In fact, all six of the hydrogen atoms in this molecule, all of them belong to a CH3 group that is attached to a CH3 group. It doesn't matter if they're on the left side or the right side of the molecule, all six of these hydrogen atoms belong to a CH3 that is attached to a CH3. So we only have, again, we only have one type of hydrogen, which means we only have one peak. And again, just to be really clear on that, each hydrogen belongs to a CH3 that is attached to a CH3 because they are all exactly the same. They're all in the exact same bonding situation. They will only generate one peak. Most of our molecules are more complicated than these, and they most of our molecules have more than one peak. Here is a molecule that is more complex, and in fact, this molecule right here is the molecule that generates the spectrum that I've been using in the last few videos. This molecule we can see from the spectrum um, has three peaks, which means that it has three different types of chemically equivalent hydrogen. So let's see if we can find all three types. So first of all, when I'm looking at this molecule, I usually read them from left to right, and I can see that right here, I have three hydrogen atoms that are all part of a CH3 group. And this CH3 group is attached to the, the, you know, the carbon chain in the molecule. So all three of these hydrogen atoms are identical to each other. I'm just gonna box them up. They are all exactly the same. Going over to the other side of the molecule, we have another set of CH3s. We want to ask ourselves, are these two sets of CH3s, are they identical to each other or are they different? And to help us determine that, we're going to look at the bonding environment. On the right-hand side, these CH3s are attached to a CH2. And on the left, we have CH3s that are attached to a carbonyl, which means that these two groups are not exactly the same. So I'm gonna use a different color over here to box these guys up. And again, these two sets of CH3s are not equivalent. This CH3 is attached to a CH2. This CH3 is attached to a carbonyl, so that makes them different from each other. And then last but not least, we have this CH2 that's kind of in the middle here. And of course, that one is unique. 
because it's just a CH2. And so clearly these two hydrogens are gonna be different from these three because this is part of a CH3 group, whereas this is part of a, I'm sorry, this is part of a CH2 group, whereas this is part of a CH3 group. So we can see we have found one, two, three different types of hydrogens in this molecule, and that's consistent with one, two, three peaks that we see in its proton NMR.